Hello class, welcome to the lecture for 3-4. We are talking today about radians. And before I tell you what a radian is, I want to get your thoughts percolating about the topic that I want to talk about with you next time we get together. Which is better, Fahrenheit or Celsius? Now, there's probably a couple of chemistry nerds out there and other people who are in physics or somebody who is thinking about Kelvin, and that we can add that to the mix. But I want you to be ready with your arguments about why you think one of those systems is better. And we can talk about it in class next time, but it, if you start trying to imagine what makes a system of measurement better than another and why, That'll get your brain thinking then about this kind of topic about radians. So we're in 3-4 of the book, and the number pi is something that you may not have thought about. Where does it come from? Why do we use this uh, irrational, transcendental, crazy number? There is no equation that you can make that the answer is uh, pi. There is no ability for you to go out and just measure something with greater and greater accuracy. It is this insane complicated number that is the ratio of a circle's uh, circumference to its diameter. So you can see from this animation here that if we take a circle of radius one half and then we measure how long is it around the outside of this wheel that the circumference of a circle with radius uh, one half that uh, 2 times pi times 1 half is pi. And so the all the way around the outside of this wheel here is going to be 3.1415926, on and on and on and on. And it just is the way God made the universe that this is not some orderly number that we could have just had a couple of decimal places on. And this then then naturally leads to a system that says let's base where we are on the circle based off of how far around the outside we have gone. So the system that you are used to of 360 degrees is this totally random invention of the Babylonians. They said 60 is the awesomest number ever, it's the best Everybody should use 60. It's so cool. It divides evenly by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 15, 20, 30. It's just the best. Everybody should be using 60. And you're like, wait, what? No, everybody uses base 10. Everybody uses tenths and hundredths and thousandths and decimals. Why would you use 60? And that's what I'm saying to you. Why would you use 60? Who cares about 60? Rather than just saying all the way around the circle is 6 times 60, this number that they came up with, let's say how far you've gone around the circle is how long is that curvy piece around the outside, the, the curve that you're making as you make an arc, the curve out there, divided by the radius. So if you do that, you end up with a system of uh, measuring angles in what are called radians. So let's look at this circle here, and you can see that we have set it up to where there's a radius of 1, and then we draw a uh, circle with that. And if you take radius 1 all the way around, well, they're going to call it radius r, and then you use that as a measure of how far you have gone around the outside in these curvy little arcs. There is one radian. That's one radius applied to the outside. So two radiuses applied to the, applied to the outside, three radiuses. Doesn't quite get you halfway around. You need pi radiuses to get you all the way around. And of course, then two pi radiuses uh, uh, pi radius will get you halfway around a circle, 2 pi radiuses will get you all the way around. And that's the system of radians. Radians sounds like radius, it is radius applied to the outside of a circle. So the, the 360 base system that you're so used to, and it's a decent system, it's not bad, especially if you're used to it. It works okay, but it's it's not, it, it, it's, it's arbitrary. It's just something that they picked. 
If we instead have a system that is based off of the, the curve on the outside of the circle, that's going to be a lot more reasonable. So here's the part, the main thing for the notes. The, an angle's radian measure is equal to the arc length of the curvy piece that it makes on the outside divided by the radius. Now that sounds kind of complicated, but remember, we heart the unit circle, and there on the unit circle, the radius is 1. So that means on the unit circle, the arc length is the radian angle measure. So how cool is that? Super useful. So um, the, the full rotation now, think back to that animation that just went by. What, how many radiuses does it take for you to go all the way around a circle? How many units of the radius do you need to go all the way around? Well, you need 2 pi or you need 360. So those are going to be equivalent to each other. 2 pi radians equals 360 degrees, okay? And that's not the most perfect number to convert. There's a 2 on both sides of that equation. So if you imagine 2 pi equals 360, divide both sides by 2, and we will get pi radians equals 180 degrees. So if we use that system now, what is one radian? So pause the video, take a second, and, and think about this. Set up a uh, ratio. 180 degrees is to pi radians, 3.1415. X number of degrees, an unknown number of degrees, is equal to one radian. So try that. Pause the video and see what number you get. Set it up. Use the calculator is fine. Work on that. Okay, we're back. So what did you get when you said um, that pi is to pi times x equals 180 times 1, uh, 180 divided by pi? You should have gotten this also irrational number, 57.2958, on and on and on. That's how many degrees there are in one radian, so about 60. So that tool there that we can now use as, as if we were just doing dimensional analysis. So if you ever need to convert from degrees to radians or radians to degrees, remember pi is the same thing as 180, and you just need to construct a fraction that the units will cancel. So if you treat that little floaty little uh, circle, the degree symbol, as if it was a unit, then if you've got degrees already and you want to go to radians, then of course you're going to put the degrees in the denominator and then the degrees will cancel. Or if you're going from radians to uh, degrees, then you're going to put the degree symbol in the numerator. You're going to say 180 over pi so that the degree sign doesn't cancel. So it's just like all that dimensional analysis that you've done in chemistry and science class that now we're just doing between these two systems of radians versus degrees. So here we've got a circle. What's all the way around the circle? How many radiuses do you need to go all the way around a circle? You need two pi radiuses to go all the way around the circle. Therefore, how much do you need to go halfway around a circle? Halfway around the circle, 2 pi is all the way around, so divide that by 2, 1 pi is halfway around a circle. What about a quarter of the way around the circle? So that's going to be not pi, but half of that, which we typically call pi over 2, half pi. What about a quarter of the way around a circle? 45 degrees, as you're used to. Well, if straight up was pi over 2, then if we cut that in half again, then that'll be pi over 4. So using this kind of methodology where we cut up a circle, and a whole circle is 2 pi, and we're cutting it into bits, then we can find these standard sorts of angles that we're used to doing in degrees. We can do them in radians instead. And the reason that this system is better if you look at this picture here, is that the length of that curvy piece, the arc on the outside that subtends that angle, then the length of that piece of arc is the radian measure if you're on the unit circle. 
So it's, it's a really much more based on reality, actually taking it from something that you can measure and not just randomly picking a number of, I don't know, 360 or 100 or, you know, in the French Revolution, they actually tried to use 100 instead of 360. It's a crazy system. Nobody uses it, thankfully. But the point is, these basic angles in the first quadrant all need to be memorized by you. You need to get straight here instead of being so used to talking about 45 and 60 and 30 and 0 and 90, you need to be used to talking about pi over 4 and pi over 3 and pi over 6 and pi over 2 and 0. So that's something that we're going to be working on, and this is something that you have this year to get used to. In calculus next year, there's pretty much no degrees at all. It's all radians because it actually reflects something in reality, the curvy length of the arc on the outside. So last of all, here is the whole circle <clears throat> all the way around the outside of uh, the angles that you might be uh, used to as we go around. These don't need to memorize these. You should, you should copy it down. You should write it down once that ultimately what we're moving towards is knowing all six trig functions at all 16 angles, but we're in right now just working on converting them into radians. So, that's an introduction to radians. We'll be practicing this in class, and I hope you have a great day. Take care.